How many fish would be required? Hold it up in front of you. How many fish would be required for a zero day journey, which hopefully it was uh, just engine trouble and not uh, sinking. Yes, but they don't have engines on pirates. I'm not a good pirate. Yay map! Yay map! Now here's a fun question about a ratio that's compared to others. When you have a ratio, let's say four to one, 12 to three, if those ratios are the same, do we agree that 12 divided by three is the same as four divided by one? Is the same as, maybe you haven't seen this as divided, we're gonna talk about that later today. Is the same as eight divided by two? Are these all, is this all true? When this happens, it's called a proportion. Just write that word down. Propor where? Anywhere on the page, proportion, where you see that ratios are the same. That's a great word to know, proportion, I don't know. What's interesting about proportional relationships like this is that it is technically also possible to travel for one day less than one day. Half of one day. Oh, that's so, that's a great, I'd even thought of that. I wasn't thinking of that number. Go ahead, let's go half a day, I'm down. Half a day, I love that. Half a day, hold up with your fingers. How many fish require for half a day? Is that, no, 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 the answer, not, raise your hand. How many fish require? Yeah, I got it. She's like, I got this. It's not five fish. Wait, can I ask all the fish? Uh, like, Two, yeah. Uh, they're all um, even numbers. Even. Right, they won't necessarily need to be even. For the days that we pick, they would be even. That's a nice observation. I was thinking about zero days. Is it possible, technically, to have a situation where there was no travel? possible to not travel? To sink? Yes. <laughs> yeah, to sink. Yes, what are you going to say? My question is, would, Please. There, would it possibly be like a certain day or like time of day where there would be one fish? Or you could. A quarter. A quarter. Whatever. Yes, yeah, so good. This, I'm glad you brought this up. Do you agree that to go from days to fish, you do what with four days to fish? Uh, multiply. Multiply by four. Good job. Do you think that you could go from fish back to days? What would the math require? You could call it out if you want. Go ahead. Division. Divide by what number? Divide by four. Correct. So to go back this way would be divide by four. Bravo. And what's really, really cool, one of the best things about math, in my opinion, is that math is also pictures. We're going to actually create a picture that represents this table on your graph on the right. So join me on the right. And we're going to label those axes. And then um, you're going to notice a pattern. All right, here we go. Check it. So has anyone graphed in t on two dimensions in the past? Right? Maybe you've seen this. It's OK if you haven't. Typically, the one on the left is called x. You could call it anything. And the one on the right is called? Y. y that's right. And x typically right traditionally measures the horizontal axis so you could put an x on your graph there which is measuring how many what's Days. bravo so you know what a lot of students uh, what i wish more students would do that'd be really helpful is to constantly remind themselves remind yourselves wait what is x again oh it's the days and i'm talking about x wait what is x oh it's the days constantly remind yourself it's the days it's the days so i write it here and then we could even throw it down like you already have your marks. You could go like one, two, three, have a little fun with those. Up to however far we went. Yes? So I think I got this right. Whenever yeah. you're like using this, you always do Y first. Like find the coordinates of Y first. What? Go on, go on. You might okay. be onto something. So the other side would be Y, because the X is there. So this is Y yeah. would measure the what axis, not horizontal, but the what. Let's call it out. It would be fish, good, but what axis is not horizontal? Opposite of horizontal is? Vertical. Vertical, right. But you're onto okay, something. So we're going to do, we're going to talk about leading with Y in a second. You're onto something, and it is the fish. So look, typically when graphing, when graphing, we think of an ordered pair as a point that is X comma Y, typically. But you're free to do it. Math is a creative act. 
You don't have to graph x first. You may graph y first. Let's go ahead and graph. Oh, wait, never finished the zero. I'm going to come back to that. How many fish would be required? Hold it up in front of you. How many fish would be required for a zero day journey, which hopefully it was uh, just engine trouble and not uh, sinking? Yes, but they don't have engines on pirates. I'm not a good pirate. Yes, good. Yes, call it out. How many? Zero. Zero. Bravo. That's right. It would sink. Sunken treasure. Yeah, go ahead. Anything times zero will always be zero. That's a great, the rule holds? I didn't even think to say that. The rule holds that to go from x to y, we multiply by four, right? Isn't that the rule? Does the rule still apply for zero, starting with zero? Yeah. It I'm applies so for every single thing. Goosebumps on the pirate. Goosebumps on the pirate, because pirates have feelings too. So here we go, times four. Bravo, it's totally true. Zero times four is zero. Very nice. Hello, Yay Math friends. I recently learned that only 5% of people watching Yay Math's videos are actually subscribed to our channel. We've got to get that number up. I kindly ask that you subscribe to help Yay Math grow and help reach and inspire even more people in their learning. Thank you so much, and Yay Math!